Watch this nut pop out and I'm going to get real mad. There we go. Who says these engineers didn't know what they were doing? Couldn't put an extra quarter inch of clearance in the back of the casing. Just so that somebody could actually assemble this thing in a reasonable manner instead of having to jump through flaming hoops to put the crankshaft in, you know? We hold the nut back into the reed cage here. It'll stay put because there's nothing for it to turn against. This is a terrible design. Come on, Merc. I expected better from you. Well, looks like Amazon just showed up with a carburetor kit I ordered a while back. Hooray! Alrighty, so this takes the utmost level of patience. <laughs> and once you've achieved it, you're pretty much gravy. Um, now, what you do is you spin the crank around and double check, make sure there's no missing needles. There shouldn't be. Uh, you can tell, it almost looks like a toothless grin. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bolts out. So what the exhaust side here, which is this, this gentle slope is the exhaust side, has to go uh, face, basically face me. Um, I remember this from trying to install the damn thing, or trying to, to take apart. And you'll also notice that not only, well on cylinder number four, the, the marks aren't all that vivid here on the end of the crankshaft. You'll also see that there's a bump, there's a locating mark on this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the connecting rod cap into place. And then while I hold the connecting rod against the bearings, oh, 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 oh no, I just nicked them. Okay, there we go. Boom, there we go. We'll slide our bolts in. Oh, hallelujah. It helps if you do not slide these bolts in first, because if it if the rod cap jams, you're probably gonna knock your needle bearings all over the place. Um, kinda like the rod cap bolt is jammed right now. There we go. So, there we go. There we have it. Um, I think we should be able to access this with the torque wrench fairly easily. We're going to put our bolts on. If I have to take that piston pin off, I'm going to scream. But I don't think I will have to. Oh, come on. What is the problem here? So the next step we're going to move on to is the carbs. Um, I've already done the one and I've shot a little bit on it. Um, and I have actually taken the jet out of this one here. So basically the jet is a 7 16 plug. I believe that's a 1 8 pipe plug. I don't know. It's probably not a pipe thread because it's got a gasket in there. Um, here's your itty bitty little jet. I'm thinking the later ones have a seal in behind there. Uh, but I'm not certain. But this one did not, so we're not putting one back in. It's kind of a tapered seat. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to unbolt 
our fuel line. Now this guy's got a little plastic seal underneath there which is going to get replaced. These are very very simple like you can rebuild a Holly or a Carter these are a cinch. Um, okay so we got our gasket there's our fuel strainer mm, that's old raunchy gas in there um, fuel strainer looks fairly clean and inside here way on down in there you'll see it is another gasket so you're gonna need a precision screwdriver at least a flathead for digging the tiny little seals out so we're gonna set this guy aside for now this is brand new fuel line and everything we will not be replacing it so take out the jet you don't even really need to take the jet out unless you're cleaning it up this carb is like absolutely spotless it always has been this thing's been very well kept throughout its life um, so yeah that so you need a quarter inch socket and that will remove the two float bowl bolts now what the main thing I'm trying to achieve with this is I'm just trying to reseal these because these seals are almost 50 years old and since we're rebuilding the engine may as well I have had the carbs apart before and they're not like I said not complicated I have replaced the needle and seat before and so we're just doing it again Huh, interesting. Okay, so we'll just put our needle and seat assembly. This is all of our linkages and weird stuff aside. It looks like this guy's starting to leak almost. So here's our gasket. We can toss that out. Float sits in here. Make sure that the spring is sticking up. This one looks okay. It's just three thirty seconds of an inch. I'm sure it's not rocket science. It looks pretty darn close to it. So there's no seal in the bottom, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, this guy is just for the choke, the the return spring. So that's going to get left. This is actually the top carburetor. This guy is just a plug, doesn't do anything. But this guy here has a little copper crush washer in there. So we're going to take our screwdriver and loosen that off. And the tooth pulls out. Sometimes you get lucky, and the washer comes with. In this case. No, it's way on down in there. So, what will happen is you'll kind of get it on its side and boom, you should just dump right out like that. <laughs> it's that simple. So, it doesn't smell like a little raunchy gas. As you can see inside, this thing is absolutely spotless. We're going to have to sand off some of this crap on the back here. That's easy enough. Um, well, I got some 220 grit paper and some dub 40 to do that with. Um, so, yeah. That's about all the disassembly you're going to have to do to this guy. Um, so we're going to give it a good blast of some carburetor cleaner. I'm going to get all this smutch, schmutz off the top. Uh, I'm guessing some of this is probably grease from where the distributor slings around all the grease from the bearing. So the other thing I recommend taking out to give it a good cleaning is the idle mixture screw. Um, I usually just set these at one and a half turns out for the initial fire up and it seems to work pretty well but it's not a foolproof method by any means so now we're going to take this and spray it out with brake cleaner uh, but you are going to have to end up adjusting this again but since we got a brand new motor you're probably going to have to do it anyways so the next one's a little tricky so what you need to do is you need to kind of push using a pair of needle nose pliers you can do this in a vise with a hammer too but this is the method I prefer. This little rod out. You mean you actually need a hammer? <laughs> Just my luck, right? There we go. All you have to do is just give it a push. This end's got a spline on it. You don't want to kill it. So, there's our primary lever. Just fell out. Do the same thing with the secondary one. That one came out real nice. Again, I've had these apart at one point. Um, there we go. And we'll drop the needle out. Um, you can see it right there. There's our needle. 
Um, so here's our uh, upper float, our needle housing basically. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a quick blast of brake cleaning and I'm going to come out. So before we get too, too far ahead, uh, a little quick tip here. If you need to grind off any of this old ratty gasket, you do take a piece of 220 grit, give it a dousing and some dub 40. It works even better if you have a piece of glass, but this will prevent you from causing gouges in the aluminum. The aluminum is super, super soft. Gonna need a rag. There we go. And then just as you go on, just kind of rinse and repeat. Sometimes you'll have to wipe off the. You start to see the aluminum come out on the paper like that. You know you're pretty well good. Um, do this before you clean it, so you're not gonna be like this idiot and have to clean it twice. Boom, it's that simple. Okay, so last thing we need to do is we're going to take our 5 16 socket and we're going to remove our oh, well that doesn't work does it? That's because that's a 3 8 I'm having a rough day here. Okay, again, you got one of those little copper crush washers way on down in there. So take your pick or whatever, what have you. Try to twist it sideways, and boom, there we go. That's all you need. So, do one more little hit with some brake cleaner. Now, if your carb is really gunked up, you might have to soak it. Again, this guy, I've always taken precautionary measures to make sure that she's not going to go stale over the winter and stuff like that. So even though the engine has two carbs, you have to buy two kits, you know. You can't just come with a master kit unfortunately because the six cylinders have three and the two cylinders have one. So here's our needle and seat assembly. This is all of our gaskets and stuff. We'll leave this here. This is a Tillotson carburetor made in Toledo, Ohio apparently. Uh, according to the casting, <laughs> I always thought it was a Makuni. Somebody told me it was, but I guess that's not quite right. So, you drop your little seal down in there, which is perfect. And you see, the way that these copper washers work is you can see they deform. They actually physically crush. So sometimes they're actually called a crush washer. Um, usually the most time you see them actually is when you're doing oil changes, believe it or not. Okay, so this guy goes in here. Again, this does not need to be tight. That's it. Boom. That's it. That's all. Now, Take, this is our old needle, and you can tell by the, just by the coloration of it. And the fact that this guy's got a square post on it, and the other one's got a round one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little two-stroke oil in it. Drop it down in there. Now, we're going to take our secondary. As you can see, it has a little dimple there, a little mark, where it's rubbing against the float. I don't think it matters which one of these go in which. Make sure that the hump on the secondary goes up. We're just going to take our pliers, give it a little squeeze. Doesn't have to be particularly hard. There we go. Now if we take our primary lever, this guy here, 
it's pretty intuitive which way this guy goes. I'm going to set that down here on top. Now for the secondary lever, they give you a measurement value, but you don't really need it. But we're going to use our good old caliper anyway, but we're going to use it instead of the straight edge. There we go. Just give it a little squeeze. There she is. So we can already tell right off the bat this adjustment's way out to lunch. This guy here should be completely level. Alright, so we can see here this guy's way high. So what we need to do, take our straight edge. See how that's really high. That primary lever should be totally, sorry, my mistake, it's the other way around. The flat one is the, is, is the secondary lever and we have to bend the primary lever right about there to make this guy flat. Now remember with this thing, these things bend really easily so a little dab will do you. So I just went way too far right there and I hardly gave it any force at all. Um, again, it's kind of just guess and check, guess and check. Um, you can see there we're getting pretty darn close. Um, I think we need to just go a smidgen down. We need to basically do put a straight edge across. So this guy should be perfectly level. Now when we flip it over, this needs to be a quarter of an inch. So we turn on our caliper. You can see if I put it right side up, it is set to exactly a quarter of an inch. So from the tip of the secondary to the inside of the primary should be a quarter of an inch. Right now we're off by about a sixteenth. So, the way you do this, the way I found the best way to do this is you have to bend this tab in, right there. So what I do is I hold it closed. Just check this adjustment one more time. There might be a smidge on the high side on that one. I don't know. If you want to adjust this, you barely have to tweak this thing and it will move quite significantly. So just keep that in mind. Don't overdo it. Okay, so what I found is that you hold this guy down like this and then you just take your little precision screwdriver and you push in fairly firmly and because this is amplified quite significantly you have to, if you have a distance you have to, you're going to have to move it quite a bit. Like it's right now it's still not even touching, not even close. So again, we'll just take this guy and we'll push it. If you push on it, you gotta push on it hard enough to bend it. Or else you're not doing any good. So see how the notch in the caliper like this? So try to put that notch against the, away from the, the secondary lever. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty damn close. So there we go. There it is perfectly adjusted. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to finish putting this guy back together again. So, we start with the body of the carb, empty out any carb cleaner we got in there. Uh, first things first is we want to put our little copper seal, this guy right there. So we're going to take our rebuild kit. There's a ton of tiny parts in here, so be very, very, very careful you don't lose them all. Um, no, of course, all three of them stay there. I think one of them is for the top of the fuel line and the other one is for the main jet. But in this case, the main jet does not require a seal. At least I don't believe it does. So we're going to... The easiest way to do this, I found... The easiest way to do this is you take this, make sure it's super clean, and you slip it down the brass tube so it's on the end just like that. Then you put it in sideways or sort of kind of upside down and you watch through the venturi here through the throat of the carb make sure you're putting it in the right spot. Now when you tighten it down once it bottoms out 
you should feel it crush as you give it a little bit of a turn. That's how it seals. That's what you should be doing. Okay, now we're going to put the main jet back in. Just kind of drop it down there. Uh, this one was a bit of a beggar to get out. So we take our long skinny screwdriver here. This screwdriver is amazing for adjusting the idle, just an FYI, because you're going to need one to do it if you have this motor. Just give it a little snug. This thing does not have to be reefed in there at all. So now what we do is we need to take our plug and put it in. So this little gasket here is our plug gasket. Doesn't look as high a quality as the other one was. Ooh, that is the wrong piece. <laughs> Thread is the same. Okay, here's our plug here. Again, this carb is die cast aluminum. This thing does not have to be set to kill at all. So we'll tighten her down. Just like that. Now this is a 7 16 So it's not a pipe thread because a pipe thread would be tapered and would not require a seal. So, this little useless trivia. That's it, that's all. Don't need to tighten it in hard. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our idle mixture screw back in. So, make sure that this needle's nice and clean. This adjusts the amount of fuel that lets into the carb at idle with the throttle butterflies closed. So, again, we're going to take it. There's no real seal to this thing, so I'm just going to slip it in. Actually, I could probably use this screwdriver here right now. We're going to thread it all the way in. All the way. You don't have to bottom this sucker out hard, so once it starts getting close, just be ginger with it. Once you feel it bottom out, you'll just there'll be a point where it just comes hard to turn. Don't crank on it. So what I do is I move it to the nearest quarter, which is straight up and down. And then I go one half turn, two half turns, three half turns. I find that just a damn near every carburetor I've ever adjusted, this is a good starting place. It's not the ideal, it's not, it's not like the perfect mixture or anything, but it will actually allow the engine to run in most cases. Um, so, next thing we're gonna do, take our float, drop it down in the bowl. There's a locating pin for the float, you see it right there. Poof, that's it. Um, you need to make sure that spring is sticking up. I think it's like 3.30 seconds of an inch. It looks pretty darn close to me. Um, it should be measuring in. It's probably going to come bite me in the ass anyway, but uh, what else is new? So we're going to take our gasket here. And our bowl vent goes backwards towards the motor. If you see gas coming out of there, you know your needle and seat is not seating properly. Um, that's actually quite common with these. So your short bolt goes in the front and your long bolt goes down in the back. Or there's a lock washer on both of these. Kind of just using my quarter inch drive extension as a screwdriver, a quasi kind of screwdriver. So we don't bust anything again. <laughs> Can you tell I've had a bit of a rough day? Okay, so what I do is I just put my hand on the, the head of the ratchet like this. And then all you do is just a little snug and a little snug. That's it. You don't need to kill it. This does not have to be on reefed tight. Um, so that's that. Make sure the float's in there, because I did forget that on the other carb. Okay, so now we're going to actually finish this guy off. I think my other pieces are at home. So we got a cork gasket right here. That one sits in the base. That seals our uh, strainer, which is going to get a good cleaning. I did clean these recently. When I actually replaced all the all the fuel line with new stuff, 
Now, I'm going to put our, so this is the last piece of the puzzle right here. So, you got to make sure that this sits against the bottom of the, boom, that's it, that's all. Now, there's one last seal, which is this guy right there. This guy's actually plastic, it looks like nylon actually. Take that and toss it. This guy here, the bigger one, is the correct one. I believe it is anyway. Well, it fits over the bolt, so that's positive. Okay. So, again, this doesn't have to be set for kill. None of this does. So, In fact, I'm actually going to leave this guy loose. Because I want to be able to swing this fuel line around. So there we go. This one here goes on the bottom carb, uh, which I've already rebuilt. And I don't see any parts left over, so call that a win. So basically what we're doing is we are making sure our rings, that the gap is where the pin is on both rings here. Like I said, I saw aging wheels break one of these on his Trabant, so don't want to do that. But he put the spring, the, the ring compressor down. Onto one of the pins. So obviously broke a ring. Because the pin is hard steel. And the rings are just ductile iron. I think that... Two and three are going in at the same time by the look of it. I don't know. I don't know which one wants to go first, but neither of them feel like they want to cooperate.
Wow, we just passed a huge milestone. We got the crankshaft into the damn block. I am so excited. These guys move nice and freely, which means that the block's not twisted and the crank's not twisted. Um, moth hanging around the block. And check out this seal. Look at this. I can't even turn the crank because it's sucking on this mat. As soon as I lift up on the block, it spins, which means our piston rings have an incredible seal on them. So yeah, next thing we're going to do is we are going to bolt in the main bearings on either end. Since I only have six minutes of battery left, I might be in trouble here. Plus it's late and I might be going home soon, but I will pick this up tomorrow. Uh, there is just oil all over the block. I've just been like oiling this thing like crazy. Um, you can tell by the excitement of my voice, I'm so excited. Um, so the issue with the stripped connecting rod bolt, my torque wrench was bad right out of the box. So that one will be returned next weekend when I go down to the cabin. And the next important step we need to do is we need to check the end play on the crankshaft. So I've actually already removed the brass shim here is about four thousandths of an inch because we had too much end play. So what the end play is is the walk of the crankshaft from front to, from top to bottom in this case. Um, so what we do is we pull, you now make sure that you do this on the bottom because the... Okay, maybe I'm losing it. Anyway, whatever side you choose to do it on. So in this case I've got a 24, a 25, and a 15 which makes 64 and it fits in there nice and snug. That is our, we pull it in. That is our inward play. Push the crank away. I said, if we push the crank away, obviously this is way too loose. So I found that 71 was actually the fairly correct number here. Ah, oh, for shite sakes. Where is it? It's hard to find all these bloody feeler gauges here. So if we go 25, 24, and there's two 23s. In 22, now you got to remember you have to have the same amount of drag in and out. You can see we got right about the same amount of drag there. So our 64, there we go. Make sure you take it from the same spot both times. Don't turn the crank while you do it, or you will not have an apples to apples comparison. So 71 minus 64 gives us our magic number of seven thousandths of an inch, which the end play of the crankshaft needs to be between eight and four, which puts us right in the ideal range and we are ready to continue buttoning this motor up. This thing's got incredible compression because these rings actually, when I spin the crank, actually seal to the bottom here. So, if you have too little end play, you need to add shims. So what you're doing is you're spacing the bearing end cap away from the block. If you have too much end play, which is what I had, which means the crank walks too far up and down, you need to remove shims. Now in this case, this shim on this end is a 10,000th shim, and this is a four. I measured it with my digital caliper. And so obviously I didn't believe that we were 10 thousandths out, so I removed the four and we are perfectly within the ideal range. Now, if you have too little end play and you don't really feel like adding shims, one thing you can try and do is double check, make sure that your bearings are actually sitting flush. If your bearing sits up, it's going to impede it. Now, I just tightened this up with a ratchet. We didn't do anything exotic with this. So now, it's time to continue the assembly of the motor, which means that we're going to have to put the seals in. So now we're going to need to unbolt and remove the bearing blocks, and we'll move on to the next step, which is putting the casing back on. 
Okay, so we got our covers back on, or our end caps back on. I'm just gonna give all these connecting rods one last shot of oil. Maybe down in the main bearings a little bit. Maybe down there, I don't know. I hope that's not a blind hole. <laughs> Anyway, a little shot there, a little shot there, a little shot there, a little shot there. And we'll give the connecting rods one last dosing of it. Here we go. Now, I'm going to give this a little dose of some two-stroke oil. Now, here is the tricky part. Because we need to make sure that this guy is perfectly level and has no anything on it. Um, just make sure she's nice and flat. Now we're just going to run a piece of 220. Again, being very careful not to get any grit in the motor. Um, kind of just want to chamfer it a little bit here just to make sure that nothing is sticking up because this has no gasket. This is a gasketless connection. Now notice how I'm not flinging this around because the last thing I want is to have dirt in my bearings. So, now we take a nice clean cloth and give it a dousing and brake cleaner. We gotta be careful, again, don't blast it all over the motor. Now very, very gently We need to just kind of dab away any grease and oils so that our new sealing compound can seal. So I wrote my name and the date today. I thought it was the 16th, turns out it's the 15th and we have in memory of grandpa on here. Um, if some freak miracle chance this survives and somebody goes to tear this motor down they'll see it I really doubt it will because there's going to be gas all over the place inside of here but well it's a thought that counts and uh, for those of you who do not know uh, my grandfather passed away um, December 31st of last year on New Year's Eve so yeah, we're kind of doing this in honor of him. If you ever follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I always use the hashtag memories of grandpa, and that's the reason why. Um, not only was this owned by my grandpa, but it was also owned by my great grandpa. And uh, I didn't get to know him really well, but there are some pictures of him holding me, so he definitely got to meet me. So yeah, we're keeping this thing alive for a little bit longer. Anyway, so now that we're ready to go, we're going to apply our sealant all the way around we have to stay about a half inch away from the center main bearing as well as what they said uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna do about this that's my only issue so that leaks to the outside we're in trouble I don't know I'll figure it out one way or another step we need to apply our flange sealant this is Loctite 518 flange sealant the one that was supplied in the kit um, just got to apply a very thin coat. It would actually come out of the tube. That would be awesome. Oh, wow, it's like a gel. Wow, okay. Okay, so we got a thin coating of our, our or of our, that's not our TV, of our anaerobic sealant. Um, it's kind of got this bolt wedged in there because you have to have that in first. Now, I did clean this case half, just before you start yelling at me. Stay tight to the bottom bearing here. And this guy, there we go. Okay, so, torque spec is 150 inch pounds, which in foot pounds is 12 and a half. So, starting right in the center here. Okay. 
Double click. And now we're going to go across. We need to tighten these bolts in a crisscross pattern working our way outward. Now, make sure that the motor is facing the correct way. So this one here is our next one. And you see our anaerobic gel begin to squish as we tighten these. And that's what we want. And then we'll just wipe it right up. And we will be gravy. This is a 3 8 16 thread, which puts us at 120 inch pounds, which translates to 10 foot pounds. So we need to go up to a 9 16 Double click. And then we're going to do our side, two side ones here. So this one on this side is our fitting. We're going to put a little bit of this sealant on it. Not a lot. Just enough to seal the threads. The one thing you do not want is you do not want to get any sealant in the center of that. Okay, so our little lock sits here up against the block. This one here sits, I don't know, maybe it sits the same way. No, maybe I had that right the first time. I don't think it matters as long as this thing actually stays in place. There we go. That's more like it. So, again, these get torqued to 10 foot pounds. Click. And that puts our hex perfectly in that spot. Obviously, I'm going to have to step up a size. We're going to have to go to 5 8 but the thread is the same, it's a 3816. Click. Well, it could probably go a little more. Or a little less. <laughs> hmm. That one sat perfectly. I don't know why this one isn't.
That's super annoying. No, that's better, but not perfect. There we go, 10 foot pounds. Now what we'll do is we'll just push this little lock inward so it kind of touches against the case somehow. There we go. And then this little lock folds up. Oh, oh. Careful, careful. We'll use our little rubber mat and our screwdriver. I'm gonna give that a tap inward. Same thing with this. You want this to be on the right hand side of something so if it tries to loosen it'll push against that. If you have it against the other side it's just gonna spin. These don't get tightened down very hard. There we go. That's done. Now we have our lower and upper end caps are also 150 inch pounds, which luckily this torque wrench actually goes in half pound increments, which is awesome. Since my brand new shiny torque wrench is no good, my quarter drive. Double click. Double click. Double click. Probably can't see what I'm doing here. And finally, this is our last one for this end. Double click. Oh, sounds like I gotta suck it in here. And same with this one. So there's only three bolts on the lower end, and there's four on the top. So the lower end only has four bolts. Double click. And this guy here. Oh, I may have to do this. Probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just have to brace this motor so it doesn't go flying. And click. Come on, one more time. Click. There we go. So our motor is buttoned up. That's it, that's all. Now we're just gonna put our side port covers on once I clean all the oil and crap out of here. From me oiling the hell out of everything. If we have any anaerobic gel, all we do is we just wipe it off. When this stuff squishes, you should see a little squeeze, but it won't cure in the air. So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to install our transfer port covers. Um, again, I'm going to take a little brake clean, spray it away from where we're working. Because our motor is nice and fresh. Just going to give it a little wipe on the surface. I don't want to touch the ports because the ports will cause this to tear. That's why we do not touch the ports with this because we do not want any fuzzies in the ports. We just want to get around the edge, make sure there's no leftover gunk in there. Now, it's time to put our transport port, transfer port covers on. Try not to drop the gasket like I just did. So these will just sit over top of this, just like that. There's two of them, one for the top two, one for the bottom two. We will take our screwdriver and just run these guys in gently. A bit of build up in that hole. Now I'll just double check that both of them say up. I do have the motor upside down. The top is actually facing this way. Um, torque spec is five foot pounds. Now 
Now it's time to put our exhaust tra side transfer port cover on. So we're going to put our gaskets... Oh, uh, that's the wrong way. <laughs> Don't do what this idiot is doing. So we can see that all of our... Oh, shiza. Really? Okay, now that definitely does not look correct. So, that looks a little better. That looks a hell of a lot better. There we go. Let's make sure that there's no dirt and stuff in there before we seal this guy up for good. I am going to have to get a couple more bolts, unfortunately. Um, one of them is not in good shape. And the threads are all messed up, but that doesn't need to be put on until it gets put on the boat. So I think we're okay there. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sandwich these gaskets in place. If I could find the stinking port cover, that would be awesome. So we can see our port cover here. And this has all of our holes that line up there. So we're going to put these together just like this. What we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of the bolts to hold this guy in place. So I just spent probably 20 minutes cleaning all the damn bolts and here they are. Now the ones with two markings on the head are the ones that hold the cover to the block. Now the ones that have no markings on the head actually hold um, accessories in place like the shift rail for the shift shaft and the two spark plug, um, the little strut clamps that hold the spark plugs together. Okay, so after tediously cleaning out all of these stupid holes out of this thing, and I've got the cover upside down. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, which most of this motor assembly is, <laughs> as I have found out. This guy needs to be re-cleaned, of course, because now it's all dirty. I want to make sure that these threads are spotless. They're about the furthest thing from. <laughs> Great. Let me hit the wire wheel this one more time. So these go into this aluminum side cover. Now before we started, I cleaned up each and every one of these holes. Make sure that they are all nice and clean. Use a little bit of oil to make sure that the threads weren't all munged and destroyed. Which they're not, thank God. Um, so, to start with, I'm going to put a couple of bolts in. kind of like that. That will locate both of our covers and our gaskets. Now, just give it a brush of this sealant here. It's kind of a, apparently it's a soy based sealant of some sort. I'm not exactly sure. Oops. Put that on the gasket. I'm sure it won't hurt it. There we go. So, I believe that this one and this one for sure, actually, it actually probably is this one. Um, this one, this one, and this one, just judging by the marks on it, are the special ones that uh, don't have any markings on the head. And they're a little bit longer. Okay, so now we have our block kind of flipped on its side here. Um, just got to be careful this thing doesn't fall over because if it does I will cry. So 
Now we have to torque this guy again, 12 and a half foot pounds, which gives us 150 inch pounds. This guy here and these two here, so these two here hold our spark plug wires in. This guy here holds in our shift linkage. So we can't put that in until we get these two down because I can't access these. So we're going to start with the, we're going to use the old manual again. Um, two, four, five, six. Okay, so we're going to start with number four all the way down here. Um, This guy comes off. That's just dry threaded in there right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bolt. Now this stuff's kind of messy, but I've been finding that using the brush doesn't usually help. So what I do is I usually I usually just take it a little out of the can. You just take a little out of the can and just kind of roll the bolt in it. And then I take the bolt and I'll just coat the threads in this. Apparently this stuff is like non-toxic soy-based thread sealer, so that's good. Non-toxic is good, despite the fact that this motor pollutes like it's going out of style. This is our last bolt here. We should just thread this guy into this one here so that it doesn't waddle around. Uh, we're going to clean this up and we're going to put some grease on it. But this is where the shift linkage attaches to. There we go. So now, this is our last one here for now. We won't do the two side ones here because A, I need a new bolt because the threads are destroyed on one of them. And B, I don't have new spark plug wires to install. So double click. And that is a quarter inch bolt. So I think we'll just run that down to the German torque spec. Guten tight. This is just a 7 16 This does not hold the cover down at all. So just a little snug. That should do it. So what we'll do is we'll clean this up with some brake clean and we'll put a little Mercury 2.4C multi-lube on it, which is expensive as all hell, but it's one of the best stuff to use for these motors. Um, okay, so we're just about ready to put the the, oh, the back cover on here. So there's two styles of gaskets. You got this one here. Just kind of towards me here. You got this one here. Is the old style. And this one here is new stuff. So yeah, this one's got this kind of funky keyhole thing going on right there. Uh, not sure what that's for because it definitely does not match up on this motor. So that's useless to me. So if we see here, this guy just sits right on top like this. It seals the water jacket from the spark plug holes. And this seals up this water jacket right here. So that's perfect. We'll just sit it right there. I've already cleaned this surface. This guy's got a little bit of pitting here and here, um, but it's okay because if it leaks, it leaks externally and it won't destroy anything. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to leave out one of the top bolts because I have, like I said, have a broken bolt. Um, bolts aren't in the best of shape, but uh, these are easy to get to. So the two bottom ones have these little funky um, ground straps on them, so don't forget those. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to run all our bolts down. Now this is actually a quarter 28. This is a fine thread. So sourcing it's going to be fun. Um, I'm hoping something like maybe a Fastenal might have it. I'll have to check if there's one near me.
So here she is all done. Um, we're only missing one of these bolts because it broke. This is a quarter 28 fine thread, so I'm going to have to find one. Um, we got all of our transfer port barbs in, so the two straight ones go here and here. They have a one-way check valve in it, and that was sticking, so a good blast of some brake cleaner freed it up. This guy has the 90 degree fitting, which faces this guy here. This guy's got a 45 degree fitting, I'm guessing it probably pops around into there. So we'll get new hoses for that. Um, there's a new hose that goes between here. I do have the um, Telltale Stream port put in. And all we're going to do is we're going to plug all of our holes here so that nothing gets in it. And the next step, unfortunately I've run out of time for today because I've got to clean up this gigantic mess. Uh, next step we are going, I don't think I'm going to put the carbs on until the motor is actually on the boat. Um, but we need to put the flywheel timing belt and stator on and probably going to put the fuel pump on. And then she goes back on the boat. I'm super, super excited. Today went super well and I'm just absolutely over the moon right now. So thank you for watching everyone. I don't know if I'm going to end this video here, but if I do, aha, follow me, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, at 6 B Dakota, and here on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm also excited at the same point to uh, try turning the key on this thing and get her fired up. So, yeah, until next time, take it easy, everyone.